Hello and welcome to FX Street Currency in Play. I am Matt Brown. I'm joined today by Ryan Littleston, who is an independent FX market trader. How are you today, Ryan? Very well on this wet morning, Matt. You? Yes, very, very well indeed. And it feels like deja vu again. We come back from a weekend. It's all going on in North Korea, and that seems to be dominating the market this morning. Um, a bit of risk off, but it also feels as if the market's getting used to it and the surprises are being priced in, so the moves aren't as extreme as, as, as they have been. Yeah. But I think we have to bear in mind um, it's Labor Day in the US, um, so they're not going to be as many market participants. Yeah. It's not going to be as active, so um, a little bit of a quiet day considering. I mean, let, let's have a look at the trends. I've already touched upon what's going on. Uh, but one thing actually to focus on tomorrow, away from North Korea, um, RBA to keep, well, potentially the market thinks it's going to keep <laughs> yeah. cash rate at 1.5%. I don't think there'll be any surprises there. But Aussie dollar's been performing quite well of late. Is, is this a currency you're, you're looking at and thinking about yeah. trading? Yeah, Aussie's the one I, I always keep an eye on. It's, it's another one of these currencies where you, you follow the central bank closely. And mm -hmm. You know, we've we've heard various hawkish messages coming out, and the economy's not doing that bad. But you know, last time we we had a we saw a big move, and it followed straight away with the jaw boning from the the governors and all those involved. So, yeah, I don't think there's any major surprise coming here. But the what the markets can be looking at is a language as usual. See what the sentiment is. I think just after we also get the latest figures from the the. RBA, you know, the latest uh, economic updates and yes. whatever. So it's, it's going to be one to watch, and we're, we're just nudging up against that big 80 level, um, which we, we broke above a month or a month and a mm -hmm. half ago. But we're still, you know, we're finding it tough again there now. We, we've got this nice tight 78, 80 range, and uh, it's going to take something big to break it. And if it doesn't, then uh, that's probably going to be a nice top again. And uh, possibly we look at a short if it's not too hawkish this meeting and uh, you know you can keep it pretty tight against uh, the highs over 80 and you know maybe pick it up again around 79 but as you say look look for the language that's yeah. that's key All about for, the language. for the RBA um, euro dollar it's ecb week so a lot of the show will be looking forward as opposed to kind of talking about what's happening now but yeah. so looking forward and positioning uh, ahead of announcements coming out so we've got ecb on Thursday. Um, now one key thing I've been looking at is the DAX, uh, certainly yeah. from an equity point of view, and that's been selling off. And this is all about uh, the Euro strength. Now over to you, Draggy. What are you going to do? Is, is the Euro too high for them? Is it going to start to become a concern? And are we going to see that in the language now coming out from the ECB? Well, you know, if everyone as an opinion on where fair value is for the euro, but uh, for me, a currency is where a currency is. Mm -hmm. um, is it is it is it too strong at the moment? Well, it wasn't too strong back in 2014. You know, is that too strong when it was up at 140? You mm -hmm. know, is 105 too weak? You know, it's you, you can always sit and think is a currency too overbought, oversold, too strong, too weak. When you're trading, it's where it is, and you just trade what you see. Um, that's a simple thing. As far as drug is concerned. The market expectations for this meeting uh, have been dialed down slightly as, uh, in terms of what we're going to get from it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've, uh, they've been leaking out their little messages via various news wires that not even December, they've not even thought about what they're going to do in December. So that's potentially kicked the can for this meeting um, mm -hmm. and over the next coming months until December. So it's really a question of how flat Drog can keep it, how we can, flat he can keep expectations. Um, not say anything that's going to stoke expectations into the next few months and, and mainly December. Um, so potentially he could have one of his deadpan meetings where we sit there, you know, on the edge of our seats for an hour and a half, and he says absolutely nothing. It's a nothing done. Trait. Nothing done. You know, he's not. He not. He doesn't even touch on it. Doesn't even mm -hmm. tip anything. Um, but if he does, that's what the market's going to be waiting for. The market's going to be waiting to see what, if anything, you know, one little line, one little message that uh, they're going to act in December and uh, the Euro will fly. So as far as action goes and, and what they actually do, nothing, of course, um, is, is the main expectations. But again, like the RBA, it's all about the message he gives, and uh, we wait and see. Understood. And uh, finally, North Korea, obviously we talk about it at the top yeah. of the show. This seems to be dominating the markets and safe haven currencies. You look at the Swiss, you look at yen, you look, yeah, you look at gold. <laughs> yeah. you know, that, that's had a tremendous rise. Um, how, how do you trade this, though? I mean, that, that's the key thing. 
Yeah, it's difficult. You know, we, we spoke about this last week and, you know, you've got to be careful if you're holding trades into a weekend mm -hmm. um, because you get news like this and it seems that uh, they like to wait to the weekend, you know, we'll have a day off and oh, we'll do some missile testing or something. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it leaves traders in limbo because you can't trade over the weekend. Um, so again, but like you said, you know, we're not seeing huge moves um, because this is continuous noise. I mean, I'm, I don't like it. I'm, I'm getting more and more worried about it because... Yes. You know, it's like every week we're getting something now instead of, you know, once every few months. So, and then you've got the increase, you know, uh, differences between Russia and, and the US. You know, we've got news again, you know, the, uh, the US is closing some um, consoles in, in America, Russian mm -hmm. consoles. And the Russians aren't happy with that. But Trump, it's all Trump was going to be a friend with, with Russia, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, and he's he's gonna, he was going to be a friend with him. And now the, the, you know, the relationship is deteriorating and, you know, you've got... So you've got the US against Russia, you've got Russia and China together sort of back in against mm. North Korea, but not coming out too strongly against it. And then you've got the US having a pop at North Korea. So it's all becoming a mess. And I think markets are weathering it quite well at the moment, but for me, it's, it's, it's quite a dangerous situation. It's, it's not why you want to get caught on. And, and it's hard to trade because yeah. if you have an economic calendar, you know when the ECB's meeting, you yeah. know when the Fed's meeting, and that's quite easy to position yourself. Yeah. As a trader, with all this news flow, and you don't know when it's coming out, that's, that, right. that's very hard to, to understand how long you have positions on for. Yeah. And, and you're constantly on the changing your timescales because you're reacting to what's coming out rather than the expectation. Yeah, but you've, then if you know the, the lay of the land, if you, if you know the seas you're trying to traverse, then you set your trades accordingly. You mm -hmm. know, if you're trading Swiss, if you're trading yen, then obviously you don't have you know massive huge stops because one single headline and you're blown out of the water and you've lost a lot of money. So if you're trading you know technically against levels uh, you know on a, on a shorter term chart like the hourlies or, or the four hourlies, then you perhaps pick your levels but keep them fairly tight because one headline blows you out. And again, like I've just said, if you're trading into a weekend, holding positions into a weekend, see your broker if they've got those guaranteed stops, then you know pay the extra because mm -hmm. you know that couple of quid extra can can save you. Understood. And uh, finally, we touched on the calendar already, but if we have a look at uh, what's coming up, um, retail consortium like for like retail sales due out uh, midnight tonight. That may have a bit of uh, a bearing on, on where the pound goes, but that cable certainly really stuck in stuck in a range. But I mean, for me, jumping out is is the RBM. We've talked about that. Yeah, that's that's going to be a big one. But it's it's worth keeping an eye on on those uh, UK retail sales because it is it is a, a precursor in, into when we get the main numbers. Um, retails are very volatile, but mm -hmm. sometimes these BRC numbers they can shift. You know, if there's a big variation or a big move, then you know the, when when London comes in next day, you know that that can affect the open. So. It's, it's always something to keep an eye on. And certainly holding positions overnight. Yeah, exactly. As yeah. well. Ryan, on that note, thanks very much for joining Thank us you. today.